Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to give an overview of the process I use to apply lacquer, or urushi, to a base for my kanaban. Recently, my teacher showed me his technique uh, for flattening the backs of chisels with the kanaban, and afterwards I was on the warpath to get good at these techniques, because a dead flat chisel back is critical to creating a sharp cutting edge. And so, of course, I purchased the largest kanaban sold by the tool shop. This thing is massive, 20 millimeters by 150 millimeters by at least around 300 millimeters, and it's really heavy. A kanaban is basically a surface ground piece of mild steel onto which you can apply an abrasive slurry to lap in a surface. I'll go into more detail in a future video about chisel setup. So I wanted to follow in my teacher's footsteps and make a nice lacquered base for the kanaban to both hold and protect it and give some more vertical space for my hands to move on either side of it. Materials for this project. Uh, obviously the Kanaban base. This one's made out of vertical grain cedar, uh, which I put some large bevel cuts on the side so it looks nice. You'll also need some gloves because all lacquers can irritate your skin. It's basically poison ivy oil. 180, 240, and 400 grit sandpaper. Some sort of sanding sealer. A thinner for your lacquer, uh, of course the Urushi or the lacquer, here I'm using a cashew lacquer which dries faster and uh, causes less or little irritation. You'll need some quality bristle brushes and to keep the kanaban from sliding around I'm going to be putting uh, two strips of stick on rubber on the bottom. Also some high grit sanding pads or scotch bright to get a final polish. Finally uh, either a few blocks of wood or a sanding block <coughs> so that you can sand a, a flat surface. To get a consistent finish, you really want flat surfaces rather than sanding by hand, which would follow any irregularities in the wood. Okay, before we start the finishing process, the last thing I did to the Kanaban blank was to drop it over the cutter um, on a jointer and remove the central part of the block, maybe an eighth inch or two millimeters or so. And this will give these two stable points of contact and keep water from pooling under the Kanaban. All right, starting with uh, 180 grit sandpaper on your block, I sanded each surface of the Kanaban base, making sure to keep the block flat and not deform the surfaces too much. Like I said earlier, we're going for a glass flat-like finish, so you don't want to make uh, any irregularities on the surface. One important thing to pay attention to is that you want to slightly ease the edges where the surfaces meet. A slight rounding, not a crisp corner, as otherwise the lacquer will tend to pull away from the edge and it's going to look like garbage. On the bottom I'm hand sanding because of the relief that I cut on the joiner. It's just so we smooth it all out. Then moving on to the 240 grit, we will repeat the whole process refining the surface further. And then again stepping up to 400 grit to really make the surfaces smooth. Not super exciting, we are just sanding wood here. After we have the Kanaban base all sanded and smooth, I use an air gun to blow off all the dust and clean the whole thing. And you can use some acetone if you want to get rid of any dust. Make sure everything is completely dry. Then we apply our first coat of sanding sealer. Now this is going to be both raise the grain and uh, ra but this is going to both raise and seal the grain, giving us a smooth foundation for the lacquer. The wood is really absorbent at this point. You want to make sure you get full and consistent coverage, brushing in the direction of the grain and avoiding any drips or pooling that would require sanding smooth again. Now that the first coat of sanding sealer is dry, it's going to be a rough surface again. Starting with the 240 grit sandpaper, I'll smooth out each surface again, knocking down the high raised grain, but leaving the sealer in the low spots, creating a foundation for our next coat. Pay special attention to the edges. If any of the sealer pooled there, there's going to be slightly raised areas and you'll need to knock down that to the same level as everything else. I'll move up to the 400 grit sandpaper again and finish with a scotch bright sanding pad to make for a completely smooth and uniform finish. Once again, use compressed air to clean away any dust. After the second stage of sanding, we put our second coat of sanding sealer, building up that uniform foundation for the lacquer. 
Same as before, brushing with the grain, preventing any pooling at the edges. All right, our second coat of sanding sealer has dried, and it's a lot smoother this time around. But the next step is, yeah, you guessed it, another round of sanding. This is the final sanding before applying our Arushi, so we're really going to want to make it count. Fortunately, the surface is already quite close to a final smooth finish. I pretty much just jumped right to the 400 grit and used a combination of the sanding paper and sanding pads to smooth out any minor inconsistencies in the way the sealer had dried. This is less a uniform sanding as an inspection for any high spots that'll show up under the lacquer. After all this prep, it is finally time to apply our first coat of cashew lacquer. This stuff is quite thick, kind of like a tar, and it benefits from thinning out uh, to more of a liquid for at least the first coat. It also has some self-leveling properties, um, which will benefit from a little bit of thinning. I thinned it about one part thinner to two parts lacquer. You kind of want to go for more of a wash this time around, so the ratio is going to vary. Easiest way is to add a little thinner to the cup and then mix in a glob of the lacquer until you have a uniform mix. Then we just brush it on. The first coat will absorb into all the micro scratches from the sanding and be transparent and as you can see here generally look pretty terrible. But that's okay, that's why we're building up the coats. The goal here is to get a consistent coverage over all the surfaces and limit the brush marks dripping and pooling. Once done with the first coat, I covered it to prevent any dust from settling, uh, but you also make sure that you can get air, pass there's air passages on the cover uh, to let any of the thinners evaporate and the arushi to dry. Before the second coat, I limited the sanding to just cleaning up any major drips from the edges. The idea is to build up multiple layers so you don't want to knock the finish down too much. You can see how much better the second coat looks on the bottom here, really deepening the black and gloss. I thin the Arushi for the second coat as well, but a little less so. As the lacquer settles and dries, it will even out and make for a smooth finish. Alright, the second coat is dry, and in preparation for the last coat, we're going to need to do some surface prep. This last sanding is going to be a high grit wet sanding. Even with uh, covering the Kanaban base while drying, there's still some minor dust accumulation, so you want to knock down any of those little imperfections, little, little specks of dust. Uh, also for this surface prep, I used my 1000 grit sharpening stone, which I had first flattened, uh, you know, super flat, and then we used that to clean the flat surfaces. This last coat is going to depend on the leveling nature of the Arushi, so I want to make sure that the surfaces are above all flat. And using the sharpening stone effectively laps these surfaces, bringing down any high spots. Wash off all the sanding residue, blow it dry, make sure there's no moisture, and we're ready for the last coat of lacquer. A little thicker this time, but still thinning as needed, and very smooth brush strokes. I don't want to overwork it here, which might start affecting the previous coats. Just cleanly brush on a full coat and leave it to set. Alright, the Kanaban base is coated and dry, and we're ready for the last few details. I'm going to start by lightly sanding the areas where I'm going to be sticking stuff. So it's the top surface where the actual Kanaban will be glued down, and also the bottom feet areas. On those areas, I'm applying two strips of medium soft stick on rubber so the whole apparatus won't slide around. Now, on to attaching the Kanaban. Instead of a permanent glue or epoxy, I'm using silicone here. This would make it uh, easier to remove if I need to, and also provide some flex should the base move due to wood expansion, which shouldn't really be a problem because of all the sealing we've done, um, but or, or the Kanaban itself moving because the temperature changes in the steel. You just don't want anything that might cause the flatness of the metal to change, as this will be translated into whatever you're trying to flatten. Plus, uh, a uniform seal will keep water from creeping in between the Kanaban and its base and starting to rust it out. I smooth out the silicone and drop down the Kanaban on its base, firmly pressing it into place, then wiping up any excess. You know, let this set completely before putting it to use. Alright, there we go. A lacquered Kanaban base and a big ass Kanaban ready to keep my blades sharp. Thanks for watching.
Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated. And always, never stop building.